We're going to look today at an antenna which at first sight seems to be an end-fed half wave, but it's not. Yet it's a very versatile antenna. It's a very easy antenna to make. It's got quite a lot of different uses. And I'm going to also describe one or two tips and tricks that make this antenna even more versatile. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. One of the most popular antennas on the HF bands is the NFED half wave antenna. And it works extremely well, it's very simple to make, but it does of course need a 49 to 1 unun transformer. But you can you can make one, you can buy one, but there's an even simpler method of using or creating an NFED half wave. And that is to adapt to the T2LT antenna, which basically was conceived as a vertical half wave antenna. There's nothing to stop you turning this vertical half wave antenna into a horizontal antenna. And I'll sketch on a bit of paper the T2LT antenna. Basically it's a length of coax cable, quarter wave long, and then you add to it a quarter wave length of single wire, uh, solder it to the inner conductor. That creates a half wave antenna. And you're actually using the coax cable as part of the antenna. And you need to insert a choke at the um, end of the half wave. In other words, if you measure a quarter wave down from the point where the wire attaches to the center of the coax, measure a quarter wave down the coax, and create a choke there. And the easiest way to create a choke is to wind a few turns, say eight turns, on something like an FT240-43 fluorite ring, and that will create a choke. Uh, the traditional way was to uh, wind a coil, make the coax um, into a coil for, say, 10 or 12 turns, um, but I find that is not very accurate, actually. I'd much prefer a ferret cord because it, it makes, a, it makes a, a better choke and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, how many turns. Eight turns will do it. And I'm going to create one for the 20 meter band. That means to say the total length of the antenna is going to be 10 meters long, or 33 feet in old money. And it means to say it will easily fit into a small garden. And one of the things you can do, if you've got a small garden or you're in a flat or whatever, you can actually just hang this half wave antenna out the window so that the choke is near the window and then bring the rest of the coax feed into the room connected to the transceiver. And if you've got a window that um, is not easy for you to feed coax through because obviously you can't close the window on coax, then take a look at my recent video on the Comet CTC50M. That enables you to get a, a coax feed through a window, even when the window's closed. So take a look at that. The good thing about this antenna is it's quite efficient. It's a dipole, dipoles are efficient. And uh, you can, as I say, run this down to, as a sloper from the, from the window, down to a fence, down to a tree or whatever. Um, and it's a good antenna. Um, the reason I've chosen 20 meters is because the 20 meter band is good for long distance and it tends to be open for most of the day and a bit of the night as well. And as we come towards the spring and the summer, so the 20 meter band will open later in the evening. So if you are operating with uh, limitations such as a small garden and so forth, you want to get on the air, then this is a very simple antenna to make. All you need is a ferrite core which you can get for about five or six pounds, and it was either eight or nine dollars US. Um, if you do a search on the uh, internet, you'll find that there's probably a, a supplier near you that can, can um, supply that core. And just wind, uh, say, eight turns. I use RG58 uh, coax. That's more than adequate for HF on 20 meters, and it's easy to wire around the core, and uh, it's easy to make the antenna. So, in summary you need a quarter wavelength of RG58, measure that um, from the end, then wind about eight turns of that um, RG58 around the ferrite core, and then take the rest of the coax back to your transceiver, whatever length you need. 
and then add at the end of the coax cable, in other words, the free end of the coax cable left in the garden, add another quarter wave. That will, that will create the half wave that you need. To calculate a half wave, right, well, in feet, you have 468 divided by the frequency megahertz. So for 20 meters, we're going to have 468 divided by 14.2 megahertz, gives you roughly the center of the band. If you're going to work in meters, then you need 143 divided by the frequency megahertz. So 143 divided by 14.2 will give you the length in meters, and that's the overall half wave length. Remember, a quarter of that, or half of the antenna, in other words, a quarter wave is the coax cable, and it uses the outer sheath of the coax cable as a radiator, and the other um, length, the other part of the dipole, the other quarter wave length is the wire that you solder to just to the centre conductor of the coax. There we are. You've got a very efficient N-fed half wave that doesn't cost you much money at all. It's great for portable work as well. Now to end this short video, here's three things that you might want to consider with this antenna. Because we've wound the coax around a ferric core, to uh, create the choke, it's very easy to actually move that core slightly up or down to adjust frequency simply by loosening the turns and moving the core up or down. You can effectively either lengthen or shorten that quarter wave length of coax and that aids tuning. Of course you can also adjust the other end of the antenna, the quarter wave wire which goes from the coax um, uh, down to the end of the uh, antenna, you can adjust that as well. Now, something else. The general um, uh, result that I got with this uh, antenna was you can easily get a 2 to 1 VSWR, but the, the actual impedance of the uh, antenna, or that feed point, is a bit low. So you can actually raise the impedance and the way that you raise the impedance is to actually juggle with the two lengths. If you imagine that you've got two quarter waves, you've got a quarter wave of coax and you've got a quarter wave of that wire. If you make that coax length a bit shorter and you extend the length of the wire and you keep the overall length of the dipole uh, the same, then what you've done is you've actually moved the feed point slightly, and if you move the feed point slightly, then you actually raise the impedance. Now I found, um, if, we, if we're looking at, uh, we're talking about a 20 meter uh, antenna, so a half wave is 10 meters, and you'd expect the coax to be 5 meters and the wire to be 5 meters. Do bear in mind, of course, that you have to adjust these on site because uh, the, the actual final dimensions will depend on your location where the antenna is erected etc etc. But instead of having basically uh, a quarter wave uh, of coax of 5 meters and a length of wire 5 meters, you could actually try shortening the coax length to say 4 meters and raising the or we're extending the length of the wire to six meters. It still adds up to 10 meters. But what you've done is you've moved the feed point slightly and that will have the effect of raising the impedance. And if you do that, you may find you'll get a better VSWR. It's something you can experiment. So um, in, in summary, if you shorten the coax length and uh, increase the length of the wire, then you will raise the feed impedance and it's worth trying that out. But there's something else you can do. Instead of having that coax cable from the choke up to the feed point as a uh, part of sort of, sort of continuous part of the antenna, what you can do is just above the choke, in other words, just where the choke starts to be, uh, the coax starts to become part of the antenna, if you fit a coax plug there, and then you also put a, an adapter on a socket. You can then make separate antennas for different bands for portable work. So in other words, what you've got is you've got a coax feed, you've got the coax choke, and immediately after the coax choke, instead of that going straight to part of the aerial, you put a socket there.
you can then make up separate antennas for say 15 meters or 17 meters or 12 meters whatever so you can actually carry with you portable several antennas which you simply plug into that socket so basically you've got the main coax feed going to the choke just after the choke put a socket in there and then add the rest of the coax and the uh, wire and you can then detach that and have another system which shows resonant on 15 meters and just plug it in and you change bands it's quite a handy thing to use when you're out portable so i hope you've got the gist of that and it's a very interesting antenna as usual thank you for your support on this channel it's much appreciated um, and also uh, don't forget to press the subscribe button and check our website we've got all sorts of goodies on our website as well as all the main lines and so forth and uh, we get the goods out to you very, very quickly indeed so there's no delay there also we do some great part exchange deals send us an email or give us a call and we'll give you a, uh, a price over the phone in the meantime you take care you enjoy your home radio and until the next time thanks for watching this one see you in the next video bye Thank you.